Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, got some fascinating stuff. First up, on the heels of Bact and Galaxy Digital launching a joint custody service for institutions, now we've got Fidelity with its 2.46 trillion assets under management jumping into the fray. So now we have three companies ushering in institutions at a rapid pace. Also, the traditional markets have been crazy the last couple of days, and there's a story that I want to share with everybody, which goes to see just how bonkers everything is. And finally, I'm going to share with you probably the best Bitcoin documentary I have ever seen. And this is going to help you when people come up to you, which they invariably will, and ask you, what's with Bitcoin? This is the information you're going to need to share with everyone. But before we do that, let's jump in and see what's going on in today's market. So today it is Sunday, June 14th, almost 5 p.m. Texas time. And uh, looks like we had a little bit of a uh, dip, correction, whatever you want to call it. Bitcoin's down to 93.87. You can just see uh, what the graph shows us for the last seven days. Had a big little slump right here, and everything was kind of going sideways, and boop, another downfall. Ethereum, same thing. Tether's Tether. XRP, well, we know what XRP's doing. And everything pretty much the same. Odd thing here on, uh, where am I? CoinGecko. Looks like you got 10, then 9, then 11. So I don't know which one's which, but uh, Cardano, looks like everything, everything's pretty much in the red, except for crypto.com, making big strides. So who knows what's going on? Who knows what uh, next week will, uh, will happen? But hopefully we'll do a little bit better than what we have today. So let's jump in. A lot of information to go over. Also, I want to answer a, a question which I get uh, continuously in the, uh, in the comments, which is, you know, where can I, uh, you is an on-ramp for different cryptocurrencies. Now, uh, as you know, or may not know, uh, recently I withdrew all of my affiliate links for Coinbase because of the different uh, things that are going on over there. I just don't like uh, the outages that they have, and then there's different things going on. So we uh, did a video and, and pretty much went in depth, but I just didn't feel it was for me, and um, I don't believe that uh, I'm going to go down that route. So I found some other alternatives, and I've been using them, and I'm pretty happy so far. So there is a uh, Google spreadsheet, which is in the description of every one of my videos now. And uh, it's going to look something like this. So when you click on the link, it's going to take the exchange fees uh, spreadsheet and it's going to lay everything out. Coinbase, the fees and everything else, the funding account, DCAs, ACH, uh, all the different things you're probably going to need to know. Cash app, uh, the actual link, Gemini. And I've been using Gemini uh, substantially since I've moved over from Coinbase and it's fine. I don't see a problem and the fees are less, so I'm okay with that. Also on top of that, um, for funding, for like uh, Automatic Clearinghouse, it's free. Wire transfers is, you know, based on the banks. And you also have the uh, dollar cost average option, which I really like. So I will take that uh, over what's going on over there at Coinbase. And it seems to stay up all the time. So I do like that. Other two ones I recommend is uh, Uphold, Abra, uh, Kraken. And for Uphold and Abra, I, I have them. They're fantastic. Uphold, I highly recommend. So if you're looking for something, there'll be a link. There's no affiliate link for Uphold or Abra. They don't have those. So it just gives you to the actual website. And that's about it. And the other two I'm uh, looking at is Kraken. And uh, there's another one called KYCNot.me. And I'm just taking a look at that because I just found out about that today. Apparently, uh, as far as like KYC, know your customer, uh, these different sites and some are, you know, very, I haven't taken a look at it. I'm just showing you what's going on. Uh, but they, uh, some do not require KYC. Some are local stuff where you can, you know, pay for Bitcoin or Monero or whatever else. And it kind of lays it down by like concerns if they have like this one, uh, Trad, trad order, order, whatever. You can't buy the funds directly. Uh, this one at BISC, some sellers may require identification. And uh, it was just an interesting uh, find. So I'll take a look at it. If you want to take a look, you have to do your own research. I haven't evaluated it, just showing everybody. And of course, here's Uphold, my new favorite. Love this one. It's fantastic. I'm able to buy uh, Bitcoin, a ton of different cryptocurrencies, digital assets. On top of that, also gold. So <laughs> can't beat that. All right, let's jump into today's articles. So first up, multi-trillion dollar asset manager Fidelity will serve as custodian for new Bitcoin trust. And this is on top of a article we just did uh, about three days ago, four days ago, where Bact and Galaxy Digital are launching a joint institutional grade Bitcoin custody service. So uh, the big players are really getting into the game and they're coming in pretty hot and heavy. 
Galaxy Digital, if you don't know, that's the uh, Michael Novogratz one, an affiliate of Galaxy Digital, will provide all the trading services and capabilities by leveraging its ability to source liquidity. And Backed will be providing safe custody for the clients. And as I had talked about before, Backed came out, uh, it was supposed to be like this great thing and it totally underperformed. Pretty disappointed in that. But uh, Backed is now going to be doing, uh, I mean, even more so, uh, physical custodianship of Bitcoin. And now, on top of that, we've got Fidelity. And Fidelity is a big player. If you don't know, Fidelity Dungeon House News, the Bitcoin and crypto custody arm of financial titan Fidelity Investments, which manages $7.3 trillion in clients' assets, will act as a custodian for a new Bitcoin trust. And I got to tell you, that is huge. Now we have essentially the trinity. Everything's going on. We've got Galaxy Digital. We've got Backed. Now we got Fidelity uh, coming into the fray. I mean, look, if you had any uh, inkling and in saying, ah, maybe institutions aren't really uh, hot and heavy, they're here and they're bringing a ton of money with them. So we'll see how that all plays out. Question for you is, and this is a question I bring up all the time, is do you think that this is a good thing for the cryptocurrency digital uh, asset market? Or do you think that with the institutions coming in, they bring all their garbage with them and all their different manipulations? So let me know in the comment section. That's always a thing that I like to look at. So what brought this all about? So in a recent uh, SEC filing, New York-based investment management firm Wilshire Phoenix seeks to offer the King Crypto or Bitcoin to its clients who will be able to gain exposure to the digital asset through a publicly traded fund dubbed Bitcoin Commodity Trust. The shares will provide investors with exposure to Bitcoin in a manner that is accessible and cost efficient without the uncertain, often complex requirements relating to acquiring or holding Bitcoin. So what they're going to do is they're going to bring Fidelity in and go, look, we're going to uh, offer this trust. We want you to uh, be the uh, custodian, the physical custodian of the Bitcoin, and we're going to trust you with that. So help us out. And of course, Fidelity's like, yeah, you know what? If we can make money, if it makes money, it makes sense. We'll help you out. And just for verification, it states the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin, will be held by Fidelity Digital Asset Services, LLC, the Bitcoin custodian, or FDAS, on behalf of the trust. And finally, on top of safeguarding and maintaining the trust, Bitcoin Fidelity is asked to sell or purchase Bitcoin on behalf of Wilshire Phoenix. While most of the fund's Bitcoin will be stored in Fidelity's Omnibus wallet, a certain percentage of the Bitcoin will be held in cold storage. So they are going to be doing all the heavy lifting, uh, as it were, just to uh, store and be responsible for all that Bitcoin. And that's a great thing. So I think if uh, we have these huge players coming into the game, I can only see uh, the price going up. And it's not just these guys here that are offering a trust. I mean, you've also got, in my opinion, one of the big players or the big player, which is Digital uh, Grayscale and their Digital Asset Investment Report, which just came out uh, Q1 2020. Actually, I think it was in April. And when this came out, they had 2.2 billion assets under management. And they have been buying so much Bitcoin. They are snatching up everything that the miners are putting out plus some, and they are actually at $3.7 in over a couple months since this report was released. And as far as like institutional investors, look, the first quarter of 2020, the majority of investment came from institutional investors dominated by hedge funds. Also 12 uh, months prior, the majority of investments, 79% came from institutional investors dominated by hedge funds. So I believe this year in 2021 is going to be the year we're going to see major strides in institutions coming in. Now, Will that reflect in the price? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Next up, I thought this was a, this was a great article. It was from CoinDesk. It talked about money reimagined, and it talks about the bonkers stock market. So it's a pretty long article, but there was one, there was a couple paragraphs that really summed up what's going on. Now, if you're not familiar with the digital markets and you don't really care about it, uh, you should a little bit because um, you know what happens pretty much in these markets. Uh, is actually being intertwined with our cryptocurrency digital asset markets because as we see more institutional investors come in, things start to mirror each other. So uh, the S&P 500 just a day ago, uh, actually this is on Friday, this was on uh, June 12th, had a dip, took a little bit of a dive. Uh, here's the five day and then it was going pretty strong and then boom, dropped off a cliff. And the one month uh, just you know up, up, up and then came down. And it, the reason pretty much was Jerome Powell Fed chairman came out and said, look, this recovery is going to be a long and bumpy process. And that spooked some uh, investors and they started to sell off. Same thing with the Dow Jones, five dollars one month. But the thing to me was that, I mean, if you look at these numbers, the S&P 500, I mean, it topped 3,000. Let's take a look at the six months. Look at this crash correction, whatever you want to call it, in March. I mean, it really took a big dip just like 
uh, the cryptocurrency market. But you can see this type of uh, recovery, it's just unprecedented. And what the heck is going on? Especially when you get when you go above, I mean, 3,200 points, that's huge. So this article really made a lot of sense. So what it talks about here is what is going on? Well, what's happening here is, and it just lays it out like this. For a proof of our broken capital allocation system, look no further than the performance of Hertz's stock. When I saw this, I'm like, what does Hertz have to do with, with everything? And it makes sense. On May 24th, the car rental company filed for bankruptcy after incurring massive losses on account of the COVID-19 travel restrictions, which had left the industry's fleets at a standstill, right? So if you had a lot of people worry about the coronavirus, they're not traveling. Same thing with the airline. So of course, not going to rent cars. Makes sense. In response, Hertz's share price, which had already shed more than 85% from a two-year high in late February, plunged way down, dropping into penny stock territory to 56 cents. But then check this out. On Thursday last week, Hertz started a three-day tear to hit $5.54 on Monday, which is a 500 plus percent gain. So it went from 56 cents to $5.54. That is like cryptocurrency uh, type of pumps. That is amazing that it hit that much. So what happened? So we had a lot of investors on Robinhood and they said, hmm, I'm going to buy the dip because I keep hearing buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. But here's the thing. This company is in bankruptcy and it's not going to be coming out anytime soon. Uh, so as the rest of the market absorbed the euphoria of a stimulus fueled recovery, the bankrupt car rental firm was suddenly attracting an influx of speculative retail investors. True. For many of those newcomers, the story doesn't end well. On Wednesday, the New York Stock Exchange put the company on notice for delisting. And uh, that announcement sent the shares crashing back to earth. At Thursday's close, the price was at $2.06. So again, same thing with like cryptocurrency. Uh, <laughs> you get in and you're like, oh, this is great. I'm going to ride it all the way up. It's at $5.56. I bought it at $0.56. Cents. It's never going to go down. I know it's going to go up. And then boom, cuts it in half. So, uh, you know, 60%. That's, that's how it is. And I think what's happening, there was another study that I, I had read that out of all the stimulus checks that have been sent out, and this is in the U.S., uh, if you're listening to uh, Australia or, or, or India, parts of Europe, Mexico, Canada, um, there's all these different areas that have these stimulus checks. But just for America, there was a, a study and it looked like 70 plus percent of those stimulus checks that had gone out had bombed its way in some way, shape or form, not all of it, but in some way into the stock market because there was a huge dip and people bought like crazy and it pumped it all up. And um, I don't really know if that's smart money or if that's just people going, I'm going to buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Is this really going to happen? I mean, did we really produce more goods and services that would uh, help our GDP? Or does it really matter because there's uh, in infinite money printing by the Fed? I'm not for sure. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But I thought this is a perfect article, which kind of just says, you know, what is happening to the market? I don't see the traditional markets, um, you know, going up forever. I see a major correction coming in, and I've always said that, but uh, I could be wrong. Let me know into the comment section. Let's move on to our last piece. So last up, um, I'm going to link this in the in the description, but I recommend highly that everybody check this out. So this was a Bitcoin documentary. It was just released on Friday, and it's it's uh, it's it's very elegant. It's very uh, very comprehensive. It goes over a lot of different things, and why I like this is because when you talk to your friends and people out there, they invariably will ask you because they're like, hey, you're into Bitcoin or you're into cryptocurrency. Um, what makes that so great? And I actually had this question asked to me about a week ago. I was uh, picking up rent from a tenant and he said, hey, you're into cryptocurrency. And I, he said, tell me about Bitcoin. And I started to to talk about it and I realized I was really fumbling with my words about what I was trying to say and how I was trying to get it out in a concise, simplified way. And uh, it, it came out very complex and I didn't really do a good job. So I thought to myself, if this happens to me, maybe it happens to you uh, when you're trying to explain to people like, you know, what is this about? What's going on? Because I don't understand. So watch this whole video and uh, uh, and again, I'll link in the description. But uh, this will help you to kind of clarify your thoughts about what you're going to say. And I've got all these notes here, you know, about, you know, talking about, you know, ask those these people like, do you know, there's been money and currency. Well, currency is this and money is this and money is a store of value, scarce, portable, durable, divisible, fungible, blah, blah, blah. But the th problem with all these things, all these facts that we talk about 
it becomes too complex for people. And sometimes you just don't remember. So I was just thinking, what would be the easiest thing to say? And for me, from now on, if anybody says, you know, hey, tell me about, about Bitcoin. I'm like, you know what Bitcoin is? It's digital gold. That's that's what I'm going to say from now on because it's the easiest thing to say. And it's not that it's easy for me. I mean, I forget a lot. It's just I, I just forget things. But it's easy for people to say, okay, digital gold, got it. Or gold 2.0. That makes sense to me. Because when you start talking about fungible and divisible and unit of account, they're like, what the heck are you talking I just want to know what if I should buy Bitcoin. So just say it's, it's digital gold or, or gold 2.0. And then if, if you want to get into the weeds, you know, you just say, hey, because somebody, and he asked me, uh, he said, well, what's the difference between that and money? You can have money like the dollars in your pocket or gold in a vault or Bitcoin on your smartphone. That's the easiest way to put it. And the great thing, or what separates Bitcoin and gold from that those dollars in your wallet, is it holds its value over time and doesn't depreciate. That's what's great about that. And what separates Bitcoin from gold is that it's more scarce. You're only gonna have 21 million. It's more portable. You ever tried lugging around gold coins or gold bars? Yeah, good luck with that. And it's decentralized. It lives in tens of thousands of computers. So it's fraud resistant and transparent and it has a lot of value. So right now it's around $10,000 and it's the highest performing asset ever. That's pretty much all I got to say. And uh, I think it makes it just a little bit more streamlined as far as like explaining Bitcoin to a person who's probably never been into it. And uh, I think that might be the best way. Now, let me know in the comment section how you have instructed people or friends and family about Bitcoin or about Ethereum or about Tomato Coin or whatever it was in a simplified way. Because uh, as time moves on, especially uh, this year and next, we're going to have to do a lot of explaining uh, because people are like, I don't understand what this is. This doesn't make any sense. And if you just say, look, it's uh, gold 2.0 or it's Bitcoin, it's digital gold. That's what it is. And it's just, but it's better than gold because it's this, 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 and this. I think that might be a simpler way. And then if you want to really go down that rabbit hole and really discuss to somebody who's maybe has their feet wet, then watch this entire video because it is fantastic. And uh, just to get, just to whet your appetite about what you're going to see um, on in this video, it's going to go from like, you know, what is currency uh, versus money, uh, how things have gone from the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago to today. Uh, there's a a great one I want to share with you right now about depreciation. I think this is going to hit home with a lot of you, so just listen to this. And I'd love to show it to you, but I just uploaded this video and it said that I have a copyright strike, so I can't show any of this video. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to link it in the description. Uh, you can check it out yourself, and uh, that's that. So um, sorry about that, but uh, can't show anything if the uh, creator of the video uh, doesn't allow us for any sharing. That's just how it is. All right, let's finish this up and vanishing so when i saw that i'm like that makes sense why we'll never figure out who satoshi nakamoto is because he can never come forward or you know face the consequences of bernard von nathaus so who knows but uh this is a fascinating one link in the comments or the description so definitely check that out and that's it for today's video so before we sign off i'd always like to say thanks to all my supporters uh if you don't know there's a join now button uh, underneath every one of my videos uh, you don't get anything special when you sign up. Uh, there's no like uh, members only section. It's just kind of like a tip. Really, it should just say tip instead of join. And uh, for level one, they pay a couple bucks. And I want to say thanks to all my level ones. I mean, I really appreciate it. It goes to help support me and the channel. And then for level two, they pay a bit more. And I uh, give them a shout out. So shout out to All Right Soft. My man, Win Mullet, who always helps me hold it down for the uh, premieres. Myself, who else? Dave Plummer, Straight Talking Guy. He's got a YouTube channel. Check him out. Grant Sharman. Bruce Wood. That's a great name. Baking Benjamins. Uh, that's a really great name. And they do a lot of things with Tezos. So uh, if you're into, if you need baking services, there you go. Tezos, Baking Benjamins. Noel Flippin' Vegas. Martin Lewin. Michael Ralph. William Howell. Crazy Crypto Canuck. Tessie Ryusaki. Positive. Fire Swing Golf. JC Durex. Crypto Veritas, John Miller, The Office, El Merg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Mage Research, and our last two, Terry Prospery and XRP Carolina. And last, of course, I'd like to make mention of a scam. Uh, my email is dan, digital asset news with an S at gmail.com. There's some punk who's uh, using Dan Digital Asset New at Gmail to offer some type of trading service, which is hilarious because I don't do any trading. I just dollar cost average. So if you get an email from this loser, uh, make sure you it, do two things if you could. 
First of all, you can email him back, tell him what a piece of trash he is for trying to uh, sucker people in. And the second thing is uh, move that email to the uh, junk or spam folder, and that'll let the, um, the processor know, whoever is providing his email service, that it is junk or spam and hopefully shut his account down. So that's it. That's all I ask. And uh, thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. See you on the next one.